some good news tonight as the 23 remaining victims of the terrorists who attacked at the Kaduna Abuja bound train have been released today. And from Bauchi to Oweri, the campaign bug is in the air and the different political parties are working to get the attention of voters. But the main political parties, APC and PDP, have some internal issues that they are dealing with and we probe those tonight. A pleasant evening to you everyone, wherever you may be watching. This is Politics Today, live on China's television. I'm Shonwa Kimalo in Abuja. Welcome on board, everyone, and let's get started with the good news. Good news tonight for families of the abducted persons on the Gardena train attack. And today, terrorists have freed the 23 remaining captives of uh, the Gardena train attack. This was disclosed by the Secretary of the Chief of Defense Staff Action Committee, Usman Yusuf. He said the hostages were released at about 4 p.m., and according to him, the committee took custody of the victims who were kidnapped by Boko Haram terrorists during an attack on a moving passenger train in Kaduna on the 28th of March 2022. The terrorists who attacked the AK-9 train in Kaduna had before now released hostages in piecemeal, with the last release being on August the 19th, 2022. The insurgents had blown up the trail track, the rail track, that is, and bombed the, the moving train, killing some and abducting many more than 60, 60 passengers in the unprecedented attack that attracted international and national outrage. Tonight, a lot is to be discussed. And the two major political parties are on the program tonight. We're looking at some of the issues in the campaign trail, some of the issues in the internal workings of these political parties. They get our attention. Let's get straight to it, everyone. But before we get into the, uh, the tick of the conversation, let me start you with some of your political roundup stars. The Federal Executive Council meeting today discussed extensively details of the 2023 appropriation bill to be presented to a joint session of the National Assembly on Friday by President Muhammadu Buhari. Some alterations might be effected before Friday. Briefing State House correspondent after the Federal Executive Council meeting, chaired by President Muhammadu Buhari, the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adishino, stated that the Council meeting predominantly focused on a single item, which is the 2023 appropriation bill, and it would be inappropriate to divulge details of it as a mark of respect to the National Assembly. The budget would be the last to be presented by President Buhari as his tenure elapses on the 19th of May 2023. The Senate has confirmed the 19 resident electoral commissioners nominated by President Muhammad Buhari and screened by the INEC committee. Of the 19, five are renewal of appointment, while 14 are fresh appointments. President Muhammad Buhari today at the State House in Abuja received the governor of Bayelsa State, Senator Doe Diri, his predecessor, former Bayelsa State Governor, Senator Sereke Dixon, as well as His Royal Majesty, King Alfred Dieter Spief, and His Royal Majesty, King Bubaraye Dakulu, at the State House. The president also met with the former president, Good Luck Jonathan. The governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, has charged all political appointees in the state to work for the victory of the all progressive Congress at the 2023 general election as he promises to sack any of his aides working against the interest of the party in the state. The governor gave the warning during the swearing in ceremony of seven newly appointed commissioners. Ahead of the 2023 general election, the All Progressive Congress in Anambra State has commenced party repositioning to ensure the party wins the state and national assembly elections as well as the presidential election. In a critical stakeholders meeting at the party state secretariat in Oka, the state chairman, Mr. Basile Jijike, appeals to all aggrieved members, especially contestants in the last primary election to forgive the shortcomings of the party and join hands to ensure victory for the party in the forthcoming elections. Justice Halilu Yusuf of the Federal Capital Territory High Court, Abuja, has exonerated the former acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, and Prophet Emmanuel Omale of the Divine Hand of God Prophetic Ministry of 573 million naira money laundering claims. The judgment was on the suit filed by Omale, his wife, and the church during the investigation of Magu by the justice in Salami-led presidential 
Financial Investigation Panel. It was claimed that an investigation by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, revealed that Nagu paid 573 million naira into Omalis church account, with which a property was allegedly bought in Dubai at the United Arab Emirates. The judge further held that the bank claimed that the property that the purported 573 million naira was wrongly reflected as credit entry in Divine Hand of God Prophetic Ministries account by its reporting system, which it recently upgraded. The judge further awarded the sum of 540 million naira as damages in favor of the church. The governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Ebony State is assuring Nigerians that his party has structure in the state and at the national level. Addressing party supporters at his campaign office in Abakaliki, the state capital, southeast Nigeria, Mr. Nkwego assured the people of the state that his administration will begin a recovery process and promises to transform the state and create good opportunities if voted as governor. And the Ogun West Senatorial District is demanding equity, fairness and justice in the political equations of the state as they charge residents of the state to allow the district to produce the next governor come 2023. They made a call in Abukuta, the state capital, during a press conference where they drummed the support for the African Democratic Congress governorship candidate B. Otebe, who is from that region of the state. Thank you so much, everyone, and there you go. You've been set with your political roundup stories. Now, the All Progressives Congress APC's presidential candidate, Bala Tunubu, we understand is not in Nigeria. He's been out of the country for what we gather for some days now since the campaign commenced, and a lot of activities are already happening in his absence. Yesterday, some top members of the APC National Working Committee, alongside some members of the Campaign Council, met, and again today, the deputy director of APC Presidential Campaign Council and seven governors of the APC have arrived uh, in uh, the party's headquarters for a crucial meeting with the national chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu. As all that were happening today and yesterday, earlier today on the street of Oweri, the capital of Imo State in the southeast region of the country, the streets were agog as the All Progressive Congress women in the southeast region took to the streets in a rally where they endorsed the candidacy of the APC presidential candidate Balatinubu and his running mate Kashim Shatima. The women in their large numbers gathered at the Rear Admiral Undubisi Canal Square in Oweri, the Imo State capital in the southeast region, to show support for the APC candidate ahead of the presidential election. The women later moved to the government house where they were received by the governor, Senator Hope, who was automatically said to what was said. APC is one united national political party in Nigeria. And we are all committed to APC. And we are all working for APC. And we believe that what is happening in Lagos should happen in Nigeria. We believe that those who initiated what is happening in Lagos should also initiate what will happen in Nigeria. We believe that the good work that the president has done for the past seven and a half years has to be supported and continued. And the only way this can happen is if our women will come out in mass if our youth will come out in mass, if our politicians will come out in mass and encourage a winning team. Because you don't change a winning team. No. So I am here personally to receive you, the Southeast women of APC, in a way to support you and to encourage you to continue that we, the men, who are solidly behind your people. You have not come back. Collect your PVC. Be Jesus. Burun Jena Collect your PVC and come back. Are we together? And on that day, from beginning to the end, we are going to vote for APC candidates, our presidential candidates. 
that was in a worry today uh, for the APC. Oh, you've been seeing some rallies. Uh, some of the, were testing the microphone. Some of the, were testing the ground. What exactly is happening? Let's get into the, uh, the mix of things as far as the APC is concerned. I'm being joined by the presidential campaign council spokesperson of the APC, uh, Mr. Fessos uh, Kayamo, senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much, Anit, for coming tonight. Thank you yeah, for it. inviting me. Yeah. Where is your presidential candidate? He's not in the country at present. Where is he? I don't have any such information. Really? Yes. Uh, are you aware of the video that was posted online on his Twitter handle? Yes, I am aware. Of him cycling? I am aware. Okay. When was that video taken? As far as I'm concerned, it was um, in real time. Mm. It was taken and posted on the Twitter handle. Some people call it proof of life. No, it's not. In my own um, Twitter post on it, I said um, we are not um, trying to prove anything to anybody. Our candidate is not struggling to prove himself to anybody. Um, people who are close to him, they know that he's an avid uh, cyclist. He does that all the time. It's his routine, a regular routine. So we're not trying to prove anything to anybody. I think what we want to um, prove uh, this period of time where people make all kinds of inquiries, some mischievous, some genuine, but to the mischief makers, we want to prove that the tail does not wag the dog. It's the dog that wags the tail. So it is not at every point in time, every minute, where you just ask mischievous questions and then we'll be struggling to prove ourselves. We are not dancing to the tune of the opposition. We have our own tune, we have our own music, and we'll play our music the way we want to play our music and dance the way we want to dance. So we are not going to be reacting all the time to what the opposition, uh, the mischief that they bring up. I'm aware, for example, that Atiku travels to Dubai all the time. I don't see any such media intensity or opposition intensity on his, what he's doing in Dubai. He takes off to Dubai. Nobody remembers him until he comes back maybe a week or two later. He does that regularly. So why all the intensity on our candidate? That's a question do you, uh, your because, party should because, be asking. Because, because, they, know, why, because why? they know, let me, let, me, let me explain it. Because they know he's the candidate to beat. And so they want to, they want to the, the, the searchlight is on him. You think and we, are we are proud that he's the candidate Mr. to Kiyamo, beat. Mr. Kayamo, do you think that this game is about you and the opposition? Don't you think that this game is about you and the Nigerian people? Yes. Those are the ones that you have allegiance to. Those are the ones you, are, you, you need to answer questions. So when questions are being raised and asked, it's about the issue of equity. It's about the issue of transparency. So if campaigns have started and people are asking the question, genuinely, people are worried and concerned that campaigns have started. I'm not sure that this is the first time your candidate is traveling, but... Perhaps the worry is the campaigns have started. They wanted to see him just like every other pol uh, political party candidate on the podium. So the question is, when do you think he's going to be back? Now, let me explain to you about this campaign has started. What has started is that, what has happened is that INEC deadline to begin campaigns have come and gone, which is September 28th. That is the day INEC said you can then begin campaigns. But it's not compulsory that parties will begin campaigns on that day. People forget they have short memories. In 2019, let me explain what happened. INEC deadline was lifted on November 18, 2018. We did not inaugurate our campaign council until January 7, 2019, which was about 50 days later. And about a week after that, we hit the road. So it was about more than two months after the deadline for bank campaigns to begin, that is when we started. So is that, the style that, of momentum, your party? that momentum swept us to the poll and swept us to victory. Is that the style because, of your party now? Every, should we, should we, we see we, it as the style of your party? I'm only telling you that we have a history like that behind us. I'm not going to make a categorical statement here that that is the style, but we have that kind of history behind us. That You see, let me tell you something about the ruling party like the APC. The way you start a small four-engine car, you know this uh, 2K2K, the one they call 2K2K? The way you start them and then you now hit the road. It's not the same thing that, the same way you start a 50-ton trailer. I maneuver the trailer, I warm the trailer, and then you maneuver it into the highway. 
That is, that's, that is how the, the ruling party is. We have, it's a massive party. We have different interests, different structures, different stakeholders, massive party. More than 40 million members of this party as our last registration. It is like a trailer about to take off, Shenwu. This is like a 50-ton trailer. These people who are, these uh, people who have uh, four-engine cars, you see them now, they have all started, they, oh, they 28, they couldn't wait for 28, to, and they hit the road. It is not how fast that you start, it's how well you finish. You, have you seen this 800 meter race? 800 meter race. It's a four month campaign, four, maybe five months campaign. Those who, who run the long distance race, do you see them start and start you know, running at their full capacity? It is how they finish, they finish strong. In 2019, we finished very strong. So I want everybody to understand that it is not that our candidate has missed a deadline mm -hmm. and that the next day they ought to see him on the podium. No. We thought that uh, no. um, at some point you guys were waiting for the, the deadline to be, I mean, to the, the kickoff no, of the campaign. No. But let's, let's, let's ask, so you don't know when your candidate will be back? I know he'll be back in a couple of days. I have that information. I don't know the particular day. I cannot say Friday, but I know he'll be back in a couple of days. Is he on a medical trip? Well, I don't have any such information. And you are not privy to it, and you speak for him? I and speak for the, for the campaign, campaign council. Which is the, the candidate. He is on the bill. The campaign council. He's on the bill. Yes, of course. Okay. So I'm asking this but, question. But, uh, just, a moment, okay. just a moment, Senator mm -hmm. Advocate. Mm -hmm. I'm asking this question on behalf of millions of Nigerians who are not only, they may not even be supporting your party. They may not even like your party. They might be, be supporters of your party. But because they are Nigerians and your party is a ruling party, they need answers. And the fact is that how transparent can you come to them? Are you thinking that you are answerable to Nigerians to be able to tell them, give them the right information about anything that is bothering their mind? And so that's the question. Okay, so I just asked, I just told you, if, I just gave you a first scenario now, that in 2019, despite the fact that our candidate, President Muhammad Buhari was around, Hale and Hadi, we did not begin until 50 days later that we inaugurated our campaign council. Then we started the campaign. So I gave you that scenario. So put that behind your mind. Like you normally say, hold that in one hand. <laughs> <laughs> you have that in one hand. Yeah. Now, Buhari was around on that, that occasion. Why was concerned? Was it because Buhari was sick that we, we started 50 or 60 days later? No. We had to properly plan a campaign. Now, so it is not true, therefore, like I said, hold that in one hand. And then compared to this scenario, it's not true, therefore, that, oh, we have not kicked off mm -hmm. because a candidate is sick. And uh, because he's not around, then that is why we have not kicked off because he's sick. Mm -hmm. I'm only saying that there's a history. So it is not automatic. It's not, mm -hmm. the inference you are drawing is mm -hmm. not correct to say that because he's not around, it's not an inference. I asked a direct question. I asked, yes. was it on a med was EZ on a medical trip? And I, it's not I an have inference. no such information. Okay, so if you say you have no information, yes. I'm asking that mm. also, if I made a follow-up, mm. that you as a spokesperson, mm -hmm. so you don't have as much information. No, I just said I don't have, that's a statement of fact, that right. I don't have such information. Do you have a campaign council already? Well, you know, a list was published. About but, two weeks but ago. But the party but, seems to have taken that back. No. And they said they're work, reworking it. No, who said so? Was there any statement that? Like is, that? that is, that's the information that we have. I've was, spoken was there, to the was there any official I've spoken to the, uh, the spokesperson of the party and he said who what? says you know there are a few issues that they are looking at the party is large and they are rethinking some of the names on the on the list. What, what we have officially said is that more names are coming. That's what it's not a secret. So you are not well, you are not taking back the list. It's not They're just adding to it. It's not a dispute as it were. Do you have a comprehensive list now? We have a list that will be re additional list that will be released. And That's when will that be released? In a couple of days. So you said a couple of days twice now. Oh, yes, of yeah. course. A couple of days could be three weeks. It could be one month. Well, so long as by the time we hit the streets, the Nigerian people will hear from our candidates and from us loud and clear. Mm. These are, well, the icing of the issues, the real issues that we are bothered about and on this channel um, as a leading network in this country. We have made it our agenda to deal with the issues. 
and we will deal with the issues. And sometimes when we need to talk about some of these issues also, we will talk about them. Let's talk about the campaign that you have taken to the street. What is the strategy of your campaign? Um, there was a campaign of the Labour Party, and now we've seen your party also in Lagos. It seems you are, you are starting with women. Women in Lagos, women in Oweri now. Is it a style, or is it just something that is spontaneous? Well, that is not the official flag off of the party. So let me let, let you know. Let, let me let me let you know that it's not the official flag off. Um, the party has not rolled out a timetable. What you see are just genuine supporters who think that they should just you know um, charge the atmosphere a bit. So that's what you are saying in Ibadan, in uh, Owere, in Lagos, and a couple of places. And of course, Kogi. You saw the Kogi one recently. A couple of days ago, when a woman, an old woman, led the charge, you know, was sweeping the floor, you know, ahead of the, you know, of the, the people who were marching. That's the kind of fervor, the kind of, you know, passionate support we have mm -hmm. at the grassroots. So what you're seeing is not the official flag off of the party. So if that, if what you are seeing mm -hmm. is just some kind of rally by, you know, passionate supporters, then you can imagine what will happen in the party itself now wants to officially, you know, mm. uh, flag off and lead the campaign. All right. Um, so, do you have a manifesto? Because we're getting to the issues now. Yes, we do. And the manifesto will be released a couple at, of the, at the time when we are perhaps inaugurating the campaign council. Right. What happened is that Ashiwaju had been ready with a manifesto for long. He had always had a vision to, to rule this country. Now, but there are dynamics now, of course, you know, because of... Um, certain issues, you know, that have happened in the world and um, the dynamics of, you know, world economy now, the, the world economy and changes that's happened around the world. Um, we have to then look at the document again and they put a team together to look at that document. And I'm aware the team has finished and the critical stakeholders are making their input into the, the document and it will be launched along perhaps with the campaign council. Okay. So... Um, let's get to the issues. What does this uh, manifesto look like? What does it entail? What is the crux of that campaign, uh, I mean, uh, manifesto? Well, it would be wrong for me now to go into the nitty gritties because that will be done by the candidate. So uh, I have to, you know, let the candidate do that himself and, you know, present that to Nigeria. But what does your He's candidate that? tell you that but let me, let me for? Let me tell you this, that the APC as a ruling party is coming from somewhere. So we are built on the principles of progressivism, the APC itself. So expect a document that addresses the concerns of the very poor and the middle class. Expect a document that speaks to the problems of the direct problems of Nigerians and how to continue to you know, improve on, those, um, uh, on, on solutions to those problems. Of course, the present government would have taken it to some level as a 2023 when it hands over. But you know, government's a continuum. There's no government in the world that solves all the problems. So expect a document that addresses frontally the problems and challenges that Nigerians face. Mm. It's indeed that to recognize that Nigerians are facing challenges. I can't, I can't run away from that. The other and day I said that some Nigerians are hungry and people went off, uh, went off and did memes. I said, why would I run away from that? It is a fact that it is not, you can't come on air to say, no Nigerian is hungry. That's another extreme statement. You perhaps that. what, what you, you, you said what, that. You, what you, you perhaps you did not premise is whether they are more hungry now than when your party took over. No, because- the, If because, you talk about because, inf inflation, the money that is available to them to spend now and then, how would you say it? You the see, price of, just a moment, mm -hmm. the price of commodity, because we're touching on the economy now, and so when you said the other time that Nigerians are hungry, it, I think it's a, it's a fact, because there are now more out-of-school children, one. There are more poor Nigerians now. There are, uh, the inflation figures have risen uh, terribly. And also, you look at the price of commodities. They are now higher than the last six years, at least. OK, so don't interrupt you. Give me about two, three minutes to Please address go ahead. this. It's very, go ahead. very simple. Now, on the one hand, it is immoral to be doing comparative analysis. But you had dragged me into that, and so I have no choice but to do comparative analysis. Mm -hmm. Because when people say you are worse off, you are worse off, and they will now begin to tell you what happened before, like in the case of terrorism, and others, they will say, oh, well, come on, can you compare bad to bad? 
But then you have asked a question that is based on comparative analysis, and I have to do that. Please go ahead. Now, just Google the, very, Google the World Bank figures, 2014, 2013, and see Nigerians who were deemed to be, you know, uh, very poor. The poverty level, the poverty, you know, statistics of Nigerians. You will see about 112 million. Google sometime in 2019, 2019, you will see about 88 million. So if you want to go by truly by pure statistics, what does that tell you? Again, the PDP has no other strategy. And I have heard them over and over again with their spokesman. They, they only campaign with prices. What is the price then? What is the price now? What was the price now? If it were so, Shion, it would mean, therefore, that since 1960, every other government that had come, if you want to do by prices, had been worse off than the, other pre than the previous government, if you go only by prices. Because even the PDP cannot say that the prices of goods were the same as at 1999 and when they exited power in 2015. So it is the lazy way, I've said this on this program before, to campaign with prices of goods without taking into cognizance general inflationary trend all over the world and the various factors that, economic factors that have changed the dynamics of the economy. You can't even say, for example, that the salaries were the same too. So the salaries of 1999 are not the salaries the same now too, the minimum wage. We have also tampered minimum wage. When the PDP left in 2015, the minimum wage was 18,000, if you remember. Now our minimum wage is 30,000. So as you have inflationary trends, you also have increasing price, increasing salaries too. Don't forget that in the worst period of, about the worst period of economic shocks all over the country, uh, all over the world in recent times, we did not retrench workers. Other countries did. We didn't retrench workers, the public workers, we did not. We battled through all of that by retaining, still retaining the workforce in the public place. So, like I said, it is, it is a lazy way to campaign to say prices of goods. In our history, there has been critical points in our history where economic shocks happened that made prices, that made inflation grow. Not only our time, during the Shagari time, there was the austerity measures, if you remember. During the Bobangida time, you had the structural adjustment program. During the Gowon period, you had the Udoji Awards. So you had all these critical periods in our history that made, you know, inflation, you know, uh, 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 rise. It is, first of all, you must then see, you must then look at how the government in, at that time handled the situation. What policies they bring out that you can say that the policies did not work in trying to curtail inflation. So that is what the PDP was telling us, that in the face of these global macroeconomic problems, okay, you adopted one or two, three, four policies. Let's talk about those policies that did not help the situation. And let us do that quickly. Now, now, now I'll tell you this. No, because yes, you, I'll, I'll I've given you about four minutes to okay. explain that. Okay. And you said that I didn't interrupt you. Okay. But what makes a man a liar is when he says one thing, and it does another thing. Exactly. So if your party, and um, when you, and I, I, I will say this again, that I'm not sure any Nigerian is interested in the battle of words against one political party or the other. They are interested in how their lives is being impacted by the policy of government that they put in power. Now, the business of Nigerians today is that they elected your party into government, and the business is to serve them for what you promised. Part of the campaign promise you made, for example, was that you are going to level the price, I mean, the, the comparative uh, 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 value of the dollar no. to the No, that was these a lie. These were, these were pop, pop, popularly no. put on billboards. No. But no. In the, with the insignia of your party, no. No. just a moment, let me land. Uh, you also have promised that three things. You're, you're going to uh, battle uh, uh, insurgency. Uh, you're going to deal with the economic problems. You are also uh, going to... Uh, um, what was the third thing that you said you were going to do uh, with your party? The three things... Corruption. The, the economy. The fight against corruption. The fight against corruption. The those were the party. three things. So the question is that those things that you said you were going to do, have you been able to deliver on them? Now, in the context of what has happened across the world and the challenges we had to face, we are not... We are not taking Nigeria to El Dorado. 
but we have exceeded expectations based on what we faced. I'll give you two, three examples. And based on your let promises? Me, let me, let me, yes, because let me give, promises let me, is the premise let, 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 on which well, Nigerians will judge but you. Let me give you an example why we exceeded what, what expectations. What are the expe uh, And that's the IMF. So why we went into recession, the IMF said, oh, really? You came out of reception, recession earlier than we thought. That is ingenuity on your part. Right now, even Britain is slipping into recession right now. Many major economies are slipping into recession. What's our GDP doing? Our GDP is doing 3.4, about 3.5, 3.5. Look at the whole of Africa. Look at, you know, North Africa. The giant of North Africa is about Egypt, about perhaps Egypt. Giant of East Africa is about Kenya. Giant of South Africa is about South Africa. Giant of West Africa is about Nigeria. In all these giants of Africa, look at them and what their economies are doing. We are the best. That's the truth. Right now, we are the best in all of this economy because if you look at their, you know, their borrowing patterns, it has gone higher than even the IMF conditionally, uh, you know, IMF. I was uh, going to ask you. Yes, I'm going to your, 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 your analysis of that. being the best is yes. in terms of electricity, I'm is I'm in terms of that. price of commodities. I'm, I'm, because you know, these are some of the issues that yes. you can't if, if say the best. Inflationary rates, we are the best. Oh, yes, we are. In terms of percentage of increase, I'm not talking of the actual figures of inflation. For example, we are doing about 19%. Ghana is doing 31%. Now, if you look at the last one or two years and the increase in inflation, the percentage of increase, not the actual figure, please. I'm talking, don't, don't misquote me. The percentage of increase, ours has been about the lowest in terms of the percentage of increase. So, with in this in this in this economy now, if we are doing 3.4 in our GDP, yeah. that's exceptional. We, we, that's we need exceptional. To, we need to wrap up this and I'll give you one more thing. No, 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 no. We are, we, let, let me ask the last question okay. because we need to wrap because up. I, I have a bag full of that I wanted to give to you, but then <laughs> let's go on. A <laughs> bag full. You, you I have, wanted to. You have about four months to be able to do that. Uh, so but I'll tonight I have a final that. question I would like to ask you. Yes. Uh, the question here that will be very fundamental because. You have to also tell Nigerians that your track record is enough for them to vote for your party. Are you saying that Nigerians should vote for your party, vote for Bola Tinobu, because Buhari has outperformed based on his promises? Let me tell you straight away. The economy and the government that Bola Tinobu is more, has been reputed to be much more in control of and be the leader of that is Lagos State. Lagos State, don't forget, it's also an APC government. So we have every right to campaign with the records of Lagos State. Lagos State is the only part, it's one of the only Not few states. Not with the record of the seven years of the Bo Buhari. Both of them, APC both of government. them. But I'm only telling you that. So I'm government. asking, I'm would I'm you, both of them. for those who don't know Lagos, but they know Nigeria but, in some part of this country, we, we bring, we are, you able Lagos to to say, are you able to say, vote for us on what Buhari has done? Absolutely. Vote for us on that. I'm, I want you are able I'm, to I'm say that. Because we Absolutely. need to go now. I'm proudly so. Not only saying so, I'm proudly so, including the record of Lagos State, because Lagos State is part of the APC government. Right. Let me give you one example. Now you just said we that need I, to go I now. made a statement without backing it up Ooh. with the Buhari government. For example, now if for instance now Buhari had not quickly gone into the production, local production of rice, if by now he, he was forward looking more than anybody. By now, how much money dollar are we going to be looking for to import rice? Right. The inflationary trend would have gone higher than 19% mm. if we are still importing rice because food is a major component right. of inflation. The price of food is a major component of inflation. Leonard Sick, we're out of time. Thank you so much. I, uh, I want to come back you, and do this. Please come back. I want to come back. Please come back. Because some of the figures that you're <laughs> banning tonight. No, uh, I'll be fact checked separately. I'll be fact checked. We need to. We need to. I'll be fact checked. You might be banning be, figures, but what, is, what matters go, to Nigeria is the I'll food on their me. table and the money's in their pocket. Absolutely. Whether their lives were better the last, the last time than now, and they will be the judge. Absolutely. They are the ones that will judge. Thank you so much indeed, Lenny for coming tonight. Thank you. Mr. Fessor Skay, I'm a presidential spokesperson, presidential campaign spokesperson of the APC. Uh, please stay with me. We'll take a break, everyone. And when we return, our attention will be on the PDP and the aftermath of the PDP BOT meeting with Gov uh, Governor Ian Sabwike of River State, as well as what happened today in Balji, the rally of the presidential candidates. Stay with me. Chief Olabode George will be joining me from Lagos. We'll be right back.
much, everyone. Welcome back to the program. It doesn't look like the crisis in the PDP is abating. As a meeting of the PDP Board of Trustees in Port Harcourt yesterday was inconclusive. Today in Bauchi, the PDP and the presidential campaign held a rally where the PDP presidential candidate Tinku Abubakar promised the implementation of a four key projects for the northeast subregion if elected president. This includes tackling insecurity, restore, re restoring agricultural potentials to realize the Mambela hydropower project, and also revive the railway transportation in the region. Your Excellency, Mr. President of the. All right, then, uh, we might be able to give you some of the sound bites from uh, Atiku Abubakar from Balchi. But let's begin the conversation tonight. In the midst of the campaign, you know, you remember that there's been threats that some key leaders of the PDP are going to withdraw from the campaign uh, if certain measures were not taken. Part of the measures to reconcile the party and some leaders was what happened yesterday in Port Harcourt, where the Board of Trustee members went to uh, Port Harcourt to meet Governor Yinsan Wike, but that meeting was inconclusive. That was what we were told. Tonight, let's get a benefit of uh, first-hand information from uh, a member of that meeting, someone who was present at that meeting. Chief Olabode George is a member of the PDP Board of Trustees. He joins us from the Koye area of Lagos. Thank you so much, Chief George, for joining us tonight. If you can summarize for us tonight the outcome of that meeting, we know that it was inconclusive. On which part was it that these things look like um, they're not bulging? Is it on the part of Governor Wike or on the part of the leadership of the party? Where do you think the problem is more? Yeah. You know, let me make a correction quickly. <clears throat> First, I wasn't at the meeting. The members of the Board of Trustees were just handpicked. I think there were seven or eight members out of about uh, 90 members. So I wasn't there physically. Uh, but what I gathered after the meeting uh, was that the issues raised that were of major concern to us have not been resolved, and that the, uh, the, the, the committee led by uh, Senator Wagbara stated that they will continue the discussion. And rightly, it is the responsibility of the Board of Trustees uh, to wade into such uh, crisis. And I am sure that uh, they probably will go back, uh, convey the thoughts the thinking of the other 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 members who are who are eagerly eagerly looking for a, a solution to our problem, um, it can be different from that. If they still don't haven't been able to come to a conclusion, it means it is still work in progress. Okay, so why do you think, from your own, uh, you being almost everything Angle. as far as the PDP is concerned, why do you think that this problem yeah. looks so much very difficult to resolve? I, I you know, I, it, it is excruciatingly painful to me. This is not a major problem. It is not a major issue. It is the last hurdle for us to cross, and we will be ready to meet the needs of Nigerians. Why this is becoming intractable, it's, it's, a, it, it, it's a mirage to me. Simple issue. Like I have said often, there are six top positions in the country by defined by the founding fathers of our party. Now, the number one position, president. Number two position, vice president. Number three position, senate president. Number four position, speaker of the federal house. Number six, number five position, secretary to government. Number six position is the national chairman. 
the number one and number six cannot be from the same area. Simplicity in the interest of the future generations of this country, in the interest of so many other Nigerians who are looking for a, 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 a fairness, justice, and equity, why can't we? The onus is on our number one, the, the, the presidential t uh, candidate, to, to, to talk to IU in the interest of balancing and equity let him just drop. How can we, just one person, creating all this imbroglio in the party? Why? I just can't understand it. It is excruciatingly painful to me to see this massive party that our found fathers, the founding fathers, slaved so hard to ensure that we bring but, but about Chief George, a system in Eva, this Eva country. Accept it. We understand that yes. uh, the matter yes. is beyond these uh, balancing that you have described. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, that uh, this matter yeah, is beyond hear you. that. What you have just described is perhaps on the surface. There are deeper uh, <sighs> demands that are being made. Can you tell us tonight, because I know you always tell me the truth on this I, program. I, Can you tell us tonight yeah, so I, you, those you, other deeper issues? Were there demands being made? Uh, from that end. All I know, so let me, I, I will always tell the truth to power. Number one, number one, number one, number one issue, and it's a major issue. Let the national chairman currently, uh, held by Ayu, let him decide today, in this very minute, if he drops his heart this very minute, you see a change, and you see a turnaround in our party. All we are saying is you want to unify Nigeria, then start from this little, little area. That's uh, talking directly now to our candidate. Is the leader, he should be able to appeal to his friend because we must balance. There is nothing else under the table. The major issue is let us balance up this equity. Anybody right. else talking something else is a load of trash. Mm. I, I don't know why people yeah, are George, spinning. Yeah. If he decides this very hour, oh. mm. All right. can I can hear you. Yeah, I, I'd like to follow up on this. And uh, you seem very okay. pained about the situation of things in your party. Yeah. Especially because you think that yes. uh, some people are not giving uh, for others to take so that you can have mm. a way forward. Uh, and uh, the threats that were made by some of you in Port Accord was that you were going to withdraw. Yeah from the campaign council. But it does look like, uh, if you look at the crowd there in Bauchi, it does look like your party's presidential candidate and the campaign council have moved on. Even without you uh, and your friends that are uh, threatening to withdraw, it seems as if the, uh, the, the bus or the train have moved past your station. Look, so what we are saying, you know, the the real taste of the pudding is when you eat it, all right? Now, let the train move. Let it go. There are certain fundamentals in life. You know, this party was, was formed with a tripod, justice, fairness, and equity. You said the, the train has moved on. Let it go. We can't stop it. Let them go. I wish them the best of luck. If you think that our, our own voices are, are of no use, good luck. Good luck. You are not talking to party members. You are appealing. When you are conversing on a national election, you are talking to the, the, the masses of this country who will look at you, whether it, you, it is justifiable, can you be uh, uh, depended on, uh, are, your, are, you, are, your, are your words your bond? These are things people, millions of people are not card carrying members of any political party. They are also going to vote so, based so, on the perception, so does it, the public does perception. It, so, yeah. Do, yeah, yeah. Does it bother you the manner in which your presidential yes. candidate and the former vice president is handling the matter? 
Do you think he should have done it differently? Is there any part of that... his attitude towards, or his approach towards all of these that bothers you? Are you think that uh, things should, be, should you change? Know, you know, that's what I said. I said, it is excruciatingly painful to me. He was part of the founding fathers. The, he knows the truth. You are now the leader. You are defined as a unifier. This is a little problem because it's a microcosm compared to the larger country. You must be able to manage the resources and the anger and the differences to prove to Nigerians that you have the competence, that you have the managerial skill, that you are matured enough to handle all differences. We will disagree, but we must never be disagreeable. That is the lesson you learn. When you come up to be a leader of a nation, that's what you are going to be doing. If people are sending you cacophony of voices, it, it doesn't make a difference. Look at the nation. You, you. From the southern flanks to the northern area, you want to be the father of a nation. So if you have a home and you have your children, maybe they differ in certain, on certain arguments. You don't discount tenants of that and say, I don't care about that. When you do that, the majority okay. of now, others will say, oh, is this the way you want to manage it? They will consider you like that. We want to go on in, in, as an indivisible entity and face the, the, the battle. A divided house is 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 a divided uh, entity. L let me follow up on this, uh, Chief Judge, and my yeah. next question will be that uh, you've spoken about Bolatinobu, uh, your fellow uh, Lagosian, yes. your brother in Lagos, uh, <laughs> and how much you don't want him be, to be president. But the manner in which your party is going about things, you have expressed your fears. Uh, um, in our last interview with you, that there is a threat on the, pos uh, the potentials or the possibility of your party uh, winning this election. Should your party go um, ahead in this manner without resolving this matter, what do you think could be the ultimate? Uh, your biggest fear could be that uh, hmm. Bolatinubu, you don't like as much, uh, probably we get it, or uh, um, a Peter Obi, or any other of the 18 uh, political party candidates. This is why I use the word. That, that, that when I made my statement, my opening statement, I said I am feeling excruciatingly painful because this is a very, very simple issue to resolve. But if we are still saying it doesn't matter, I am not God. You know, like I said earlier, a divided house is a defeated house. We should move away from this and see how much we can do to bring all warring factions to the table and resolve it. One major issue, let there be a balance between the six top positions in the land. That's all. And what is the thing do that we are think, asking for here? Stand a how, how, how do you judge? think? Do you think? Yes. Yeah, apologies. Do you think Atiku stand a chance yeah. in this election of clinging the, uh, the, the mandate? No, I am not God. And I don't see through crystal balls. All I am saying, let us have a united front. Because divided, we will fall. And if they don't believe in that, I'm talking from history. Look at uh, in your first segment. The Goda gentleman there was saying they have 40 million registered voters. How is that the best of luck in their party? We have a humongous number also in our party. But all these put together are definitely no more than the Nigerians electorate. They are more in number. You are to appeal to this number. You are to talk to this number. You are to convince the number, those people, that yes, we will manage the resources of this country ultimately 
for your benefit. And if you are not doing that, you are not talking to party members. We are just party members. What about all those people who are not card-carrying members? And they are the very, very important people who will decide the future of, of, of their own country. And what we are saying is when you go out campaigning, you are saying, please trust me that I will manage the resources of your nation for your benefit. If that is not coming true, then how do you, how do you, how do you add it up? That it's a very, very simple thing to do. If you discountenance that and you say it doesn't matter, you roll on the tank, good luck. I am not God and I'm not a soothsayer and I'm not, but I've been participating in this, in this venture since 1999. You need everybody on board. All hands must be on deck. That's all I'm saying. Chief Judge, let me, yeah, let me allow allow our viewers to be able to listen to uh, Mr. Atiku Abubakar in Baochi today when he was addressing uh, those who turned up for that uh, rally. Take a listen to Atiku Abubakar. Therefore, I want to use this opportunity to congratulate the insecurity the that is in the North Isab region is addressed. Secondly, the Mambila Hydroelectric Power Station has been on the drawing board for 50 years. For 50 years. And no government, no government has summoned the courage to execute this project. If PDP is elected and I come to be the president, I pledge and promise you Mambila Hydroelectric Power Station will be a reality. Atiku Abubakar there in Bauchi. Chief Bode George, let me perhaps, uh, I mean, if you have some comments on Atiku Abubakar, I mean, you can uh, say something about it. But let me take your, get your view on what is happening in Lagos State. That is your local uh, tough. I mean, you are a leader in uh, PDP Lagos. You've expressed your view on mm. the choice of your governorship candidate in Lagos. That's Judy Adediron, of the choice of the Nollywood actor, Funke Akindele, that there was no consultation. Have you moved on? What is the best way to approach this? Is, it, is the candidate working with you? You know, no. You know, those ones are internal dynamics of our party. Uh, but there is a popular saying in my part of the world. They, they, they refer to that as, if you go to the forest and you have trees upon trees falling over each other, how do you clear it? You start from the top. So, uh, and fortunately, the presidential election comes earlier than the governorship election. I, I, I don't see this as a major, major problem. We will resolve our crisis. Uh, but the important thing now is to make sure that the tripod on which this platform, PDP, was established remains a stable platform. And what is the tripod? Justice, fairness, and equity. It's a three-legged body. A three-legged body is a very, very stable platform. I'm talking from an engineering point of view. Now, and for me, unless that is well uh, stabilized, how can we launch any campaign? We are wobbling. And for God's sake, it takes just this uh, commitment and loyalty and dedication to the to to the to the tenants on which this party was established to get this done we are ready i i i cannot move to any other political party because i can't see any any political party that is uh, as entrenched as pdp if it's not well done i stay in my house so coming back now to the lower one the, uh, the Lagos state, once we are able to resolve the top one, we will all meet together again and resolve it. 
there is never any organization, I've never seen any organization in the world that you will not have one crisis or the other. The ability to rise above the crisis, the ability to manage the crisis to a successful conclusion will be a measure of your competence. That's all I'm saying. And this uh, idiom has never yeah, changed. Yeah. And, and, and for me, if you think we, we're talking a lot of BS, fine and dandy, you know, we'll see. Mm. We are totally out of time, but I don't know if I have 20 seconds. If I get your commitment to answer this next question in 20 seconds, I just want to get final thought. Okay. 2020, 2019, your party was beaten. 2015, your party was beaten. What is your biggest fear? You think that this election might go in, in that same direction? Just 20 seconds, Chief George. Okay, I am praying, I'm hoping, and that's why you find the real elders who have come out to be talking and be ringing the alarm bells. I hope, I pray that some people will listen. If you don't, post election report will show that we didn't keep quiet. I, I, am, I don't see right. crystal ball and I'm not the almighty God, but I wish our party the very best. Mm. But in doing it, unite everybody. The rich, the poor, right. and the, uh, 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 and the uh, middle class. Unite all of them. That's why all you right. can be a unifier. Chief Olabode George, a member of the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Always my pleasure. Thank you. Have a good evening, Chief. And that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimbale. Bye-bye.